just the difference between the changes between the physical and human geography after studying old photos with you can see that the physical side is exactly the same as how it was 50 60 years ago yeah where it's the human side with the defense systems and the houses that's all changed human have affected it so much more than the physical side the physical side seems to have withstand withstood everything that's been hit at it and it's the same so they're natural yeah. there's the plants that hold the sand dunes together and they're big yeah. I like those answers as well really really good answers guys they're excellent how stable are the dunes what evidence is there I think it depends like the further away from the water probably maybe the more stable because the drier more compact whereas with like the water and with humans it does crumble and erode quite easily but obviously because it's still here it's quite good evidence that they are relatively stable like, they must be here like thousands of years and they're still here now so that's like shows that the stable one. Another fantastic answer. Yes, with three excellent, excellent answers. I like that. Okay. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Mine says, what hardship do sand dune plate plants face? Think about what plants need to survive. Uh, I I wasn't really too <coughs> sure, but they must be like starved of some like minerals and things with the just having the sand in. He said that with because they're made from like with Earth shells, they're like a lot of calcium and alkaline conditions. How would the coastline have looked 10,000 years ago if the dunes weren't there here? How have they got here? So I think that 10,000 years ago the coastline would have been a lot further forward because of er erosion has caused it to be pushed back. And I'm not entirely sure how the dunes got here, but I would assume that it's through the waves bringing up and depositing on the beach over the years and that builds up sand dunes. And then we've all mentioned the weather conditions, so what weather conditions are they that prevail to allow a sand dune to grow? Uh, wind. And what specifically about the wind? Blows inland. Absolutely, yeah it blows inland, so it brings it onto, where does most of our weather come from and our wind? The, like, South Atlantic. Yeah, which is what direction? So you look, if you pointed now, where, where's it coming from? Oh, yeah. So are conditions today fairly typical? Yeah. So what's happening to the sand on the beach? All been blowing. All coming up. In it. Fantastic, so we've got a source of material, sand, we've got a wind direction, but how are the sand dunes formed? Because if it wasn't for something, they would just keep blowing and blowing and blowing. So why are they, they've become quite stable, have they? Being, we sat here, it's quite solid. So what's helped to stabilize it? Plants that are growing on it. Okay, so we've got something that traps the sand and the plants act as that trap and their root system. We get the material itself, which is an ancient material, which has been, um, comes from, the glaciation time. This one is called marram grass and one of the differences between marram grass its leaf is curled around. Can you see its leaf is curled, it's curled tightly and that's one of the adaptations it's made to living in very low water levels. So it curls in so it doesn't lose water from its little pores called stomata. This doesn't like salt as much as this one. So which one's going to be found closest to the sea? That one. This one can cope with a metre of deposition per year of sand. This one can cope with maybe half a metre of deposition per year. Which one's going to be found growing higher on the higher dunes? That one. So the adaptations that the plants have made have created the dunes that we've got. There are differences between the plants, but they've allowed and they've created the dunes that we've got. It's not the sand that's created the dunes, it's the plants that have allowed the dunes to grow. This one's 
a very, very well adapted plant. And this dominant plant is called marum grass. And this plant is called sea or sand couch grass. And they're the they're two common ones. But the marum grass is found over the high dunes and this one is found just by the sea. Where I've put it, it shows that there's a percentage. So what would you say is the coverage of that plant in that quadrat? It's a rough estimate. So. Just an <coughs> estimate. 45%. 45%. Yeah. What about you, Dan? About the same. About the same? Use percentage cover as a general guide to the amount. Okay, it's not as scientific as, say, counting each of those plants. And here, and here, and here. There's quite a lot of dandelion. There's some in here as well. So, see, they cover they cover quite a patch with their with their leaves. I'd say a little bit higher than five. Can be much water this high up above the water table. So it could be quite because it's quite rare and it's still quite harsh and it doesn't like being come. <laughs> Um, ladies' bed straw was used. The, the sweet smell from the, the flowers was used to scent the beds in the medieval times. Um, so it has got many uses in bed and as straw, basically, as a bedding material. Um, so this one's ladies' bed straw. We find that in here. We've got a lot of this uh, red fescue grass still and a little bit of marum grass. And we've got a few mosses in here and a few dandelions. And there's just one plant I'd like to tell you about just here, because its story is, um, tells us about why it's adapted to live in on the coast. It's called rest harrow. And an old, a harrow is an old plough, but it was horse drawn. And the harrow was going along the coastal fields, trying to plough up and, and furrow the fields but it kept getting stuck on the roots of this plant and so this would cause the harrow to rest hence the name and it's adapted to live in very dry conditions and so it's got a very wide network of roots which are very shallow but they go on for so long they cause these old horse-drawn harrows to to stop and it's an adaptation that it's got to living in very very dry conditions they release this um, chemical for the plant to use so it can live where there's not much nitrogen in the soil so it tells us the soil is poor in nitrogen it also its roots tell us that it's an environment which is very dry as well so the plants tell us a big story and the presence of this um, tells us what the environment is like so that's rest harrow and there's not a huge amount of it in here okay Lloyd what do you think you've uh, picked up on today uh, that you'll carry back with you in how different like the sand dunes are from how far away they can be from a beach. So, like here, uh, it's all mainly grass, but a few meters over there, it's sandy as well. And just how different they can be. So it's the hugeness, the size of of this landscape. It surprised you, has it? Um, yeah, actually. How's how far back it goes compared to where the beach is? Right. Yeah. Great. And. Um, it's Adam. Adam. Adam, what's uh, grab you about today? Uh, how like the different plants are able to like adapt and uh, able to live in hostile environments, and then like just a few meters down a sand dune, it's completely different, and they're still able to like uh, live there. And and you're going to take that forward? Yeah. yeah. Great. And I'll have to do this fairly quickly. I'm running out of minutes. And Lorna. Lorna. <laughs> and what, what's grabbed you today? Um, just about like, the coastal management and about how much effort and money actually goes into making that safe for like, towns A lot more involved than you first thought. Yeah. Yeah. And... Um, Meredith. Meredith. Um, the differences in conditions going back through the sand dunes, so from the embryo to the going back 